G'day YouTube. It's been a while since I've done a species spotlight, so I thought I'd uh, give, a, give a rundown of Nepenthes platykyla today. Uh, you might be able to see behind me this old vine here, which is my big female plant. I was hoping this would come, well, I put out some pictures soon, but it's been constantly flowering for uh, over a year now, so haven't had any good pictures on that to show. And I'm just going to leave that, get these flowers done. I'll pollinate it with a few interesting things. And once that's all done and dusted, I think it's going to be time for a repot and tidy it right up and then give it a break from flowers for a while just to bounce back. It does take a lot of energy. Uh, but I mean, this plant here goes from this here, which is about 1.8 meters off the ground, maybe a little bit less. And that's the pot. Oh, the pot's down in there, in there. And if I swing you around, so this is the start of the vine. You got this little side shoot that came out recently with a nice female flower on it. But just there, you can maybe make out the female flower about to touch the door. Now that's two and a half meters from where I'm standing. So this plant is seriously huge. It's probably pushing, I mean, it's over four meters, definitely maybe five meters if I straightened it all out, maybe a bit more. So they do get large and they will vine quite crazily once they get going. Uh, but over here, you'll see, oh, ignore that, that one's a Vichy eye. Well, I've got these three smaller plants. Now, I got all these around the same time uh, early last year. And my intentions were chasing a female to use for breeding. Little did I know the one that I already had from EP was going to be female. But now I've got some different traits to work in a breeding. Maybe another one of these is female. Um, but obviously going to be looking for some ma nice male traits to add in my breeding. Uh, so this is another little one from EP. You can see it's, they've just got these beautiful striped peristomes. Uh, this is a BE3503. You know, nice red bodied pitch, pitches. And it's going to be interesting to see how this one matures. And then a newer BE clone, the 4065. See a nice fresh picture there. Again, similar color or similar look, but the, uh, the, the picture body on these seems to be more of a purple compared to the red on this one. And the striping coming through is just gorgeous again. Uh, so you can see I've got these potted up in cocoa chips and perlite. It's probably, it's mostly not that size of chip generally. Let's see if I can get something out of here to show you. You know, maybe a medium, medium grade orchid chip and some uh, fairly coarse perlite in there. And these seem happy most of the year. I definitely find uh, through winter. I don't really get the pictures. Uh, I meant to look up the elevation before this video, but I forgot as usual. Um, I think they, they class into in intermediate rather than highland, which I think a lot of people mistake them for. But in saying that, yeah, sorry, just got a bit distracted, my own thoughts. Um, but I do find they stop picturing through winter and definitely prefer the warmer weather. I've heard a lot of people even growing them lowland. They can take some good bright light. You can see here, I've got no shade cloth on. I had no shade cloth on over winter, oh, sorry, over summer. Uh, temperatures in the greenhouse, I aim for 28. Sometimes I don't quite get there. Oh, sorry, don't get that cool. So you know, I might have bumped 31 on some really hot days. You know, some of the days here get up to the close to 40 degrees or even over a few days. But I think the max my greenhouse saw was probably 32 degrees Celsius and drops down to 18 degrees at night. So it's a good intermediate temperature. Uh, most of the plants in here are intermediate. So I've, obviously, we've got the fridge now for the Highlanders. Keep all the cuttings and my seedlings happy. 
Uh, going, you know, just going alongside with all my VT or a lot of my VT guys, and they seem really happy there. I think all three of these plants, when I got them, were definitely not anywhere near this size. Uh, probably, oh, would even be half this size. They would have all been, yeah, around that hundred millimeter or four inch mark. So you can see they've put on some good size over that year. I think the uh, 3503 seems to be the fastest growing uh, at the moment. But I'd imagine in another year or two, these will start to vine and might start moving into some intermediate pitches and then eventually the uppers that you know we all love to see. You, you see those huge deep dish peristomes. Um, I might actually throw a photo of, the, of my big female one from EP. Try and find one up as the thumbnail for you guys to see. But it's such an exciting species and definitely it's on the e I'd put it on the easier to intermediate growers. They're not too picky. Um, and just absolutely spectacular when they mature. And if I can find them easily, I actually made my own uh Pure Platycylla seeds last year. Unfortunately, they haven't been last year, this year, end of last year I sowed them. They weren't fantastic germinations. I didn't get a whole heap of seeds, but you can see there, just start to, more just start to germinate. That one's been up for a little while. But my own horticulturally made Platycylla seeds, so I'm very excited about that. And can't wait to see how they sure out. Also, obviously, did the uh, couple of hybrids of Vergelii, Maxima Dark. I think there's some. Ah, uh, oh, there you go. Some Vchim there. Uh, unfortunately, I think the the latest flower. I think I got the timing wrong on the pollination. Unfortunately, or the plant wasn't overly happy. But it doesn't look like a high success. But I'll leave the seed pods on there. See how it goes. Uh, a couple of months when they're getting ready to uh, harvest and see if there's anything viable in there. Uh, I think that's it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Cheers.